Well, there was no snow in the ground at this time, okay? I think it was spring or summer. And uh, we were um, just hanging around there, getting a little campfire going. And they both went to get some wood. And I felt guilty because it was getting dark. And um, I didn't, you know, I just had my machete with me. And I said, I got to help out. I get it. I start walking in the woods. And then all of a sudden, as I start walking in, little by little, I start picking up these branches. Suddenly, I would say about as I get in 30 feet, all of a sudden, I heard a sound I will never forget. I don't scare easily, but I have to admit, I was very scared when I heard that sound. It sounded like it was only about, I would say, um, maybe 30 to 40 feet away from me at the most, and it sounded like it was like nothing I ever heard before. It was like out of a horror movie, you know, something to have, um, I mean, I'll try to explain it right now. I just, you know, I hope I don't sound silly doing this. It was like, <laughs> like, you know, but louder and more fiercer. It was angry. It didn't want me there. And whatever it was, it wasn't too far away. And I picked up the last piece of wood. I put it in my arm. I grabbed my machine. I said, well, it's better than nothing. And I backed away. Out of it. And then all of a sudden I hear Mike say, what the hell was that? And I go, I don't know, but I said, it, it doesn't sound good. I said, we, I think we better leave here quickly. I remember that me and this psychic woman, who didn't want to go in there because, you know, she had told my fortune for, for at least an hour, you know. Somebody had fixed me up with her. I told them I like women bodybuilders, but um, they fixed me up with her just the same because she was a tall, heavy-set woman. So um, we got along really good, but she didn't want to go in the swamps because she said it was too dangerous. And she, which, half of what she said turned out to be true. She said that I would start this thing, and start the team, end it, and all of a sudden, start it again. And she said that I would be in some kind of danger, but that I would get out of it and that um, I would not give up. That I, was, I would be very persistent and determined to solve the mysteries, which I was. And so uh, I said, please, look, come with us just once. I says, can you do that? You know, and she's making all these excuses and everything. I said, okay, look, it's up to you. You want to go? Fine. But eventually she went. Now, I, I had to say all this because she was determined not to go. But eventually she finally did. And what happened was, thank God she went. Because when we got there by canoe, her, me, her, and Mike, and Mike's canoe, we were only there an hour, and more happened in that one hour than you'd ever imagine. Something was there, my friend, and whatever it was, it was small. We were talking, sitting around the campfire, and suddenly, uh, Mike, as Mike was preparing the beans, she said she sent something in the woods behind us. Okay, And she says, whatever it is, I sense it is lonely, and it wants a mate. I says, yeah, oh, so don't I. <laughs> we sat there, and she said, it's there, she said. Something is there. And she was right. Something was there. Because all of a sudden, um, we all heard something drop from a tree. And get ready for this. It ran like the sound of a child running. That's a child like maybe 10 or 11 years old. Imagine that. It, it, now, we weren't deep in the middle of the swamps, but yet there was no way to get into those swamps unless you had some kind of a boat or a canoe. Okay. And this thing, the footsteps were heading for the path that leads deep into the swamps. So after that, um, we were looked at each other. Did you hear that? Yeah, we heard that. It's like, what the heck? And she was getting scared already. She was very nervous. She wanted to get the hell out of there. I says, okay, look, you people. I'm going to speak in different languages just for the heck of it. I spoke in Portuguese, Spanish, French, you know, Italian, Russian, and German, in English, just for the heck of it to see if, if I understood the language. All right, so as I went to go check on the canoe, suddenly I heard a scream and then a shot. And I, so I went over to run the help to see what was going on, and there they were. She was a big woman. She almost knocked me over. <laughs> She's like, um, get out, come on, let's go, let's get in the canoe. She says, well, take it easy. You almost knocked me over, you know? And she goes, well, um, uh, she, I said, well, what happened? And she's telling me, she's like, well, I thought I saw something, a big furry thing. And um, I told Mike to shoot. I says, Mike, did you see something? He goes, well, I'm not sure. I thought I did. I said, Mike, we, you, you know, if you're shooting, I mean, we, you just, you got to be shooting at something. So anyways, uh, we all get in the canoe and um, we get out, put all the stuff in there. And oh my God, I thought she was going to knock us into the stinking, uh, you know, in a river. <laughs> I, get, I sat. 
in the middle with a gun, a rifle in my right hand and the flashlight in my left. And um, she said that something threw something at us, but I didn't see nothing. And uh, eventually, we finally left that area. I went back the next week with Mike and stood there for an hour again, maybe two at the most, and nothing happened. So um, something is definitely there. Yeah, that was the Bridgewater um, Triangle Expedition Team. Um, I started it in 85, the summer of 85. And, um, you know, that was, was me. Um, and then it was uh, Mike Foster. And then there was this other guy, Tony. I won't use his last name on this because, um, for certain reasons, because um, he's no longer part of it. And, you know, if you know what I mean, legal purposes. And then there was other woman, Laura. Uh, she was uh, part of the team, too. She was the, really um, the best member uh, as far as being organized and all that and dependable is concerned. Uh, but it didn't last too long. We eventually lost Laura to a, a religious cult. Um, she got brainwashed by them, you know, and they said that she couldn't camp with men, you know. One of those Christian religious cults, so just to clarify that. So that was it. Well, we got to go on an expedition with her once and... Um, well, twice, and that was it. It makes me very sad when I think about it. Native American people, well, so I know a little bit about them. You know, um, the chief, when I had a talk with um, one of them in particular, he was extremely informative. He told me his people, you know, cursed the Triangle you know, area here because the white man stole their land and mistreated their people. Uh, the uh, indigenous people to this area, the Wampanoags, who I've just recently found out have a few Portuguese words in their language. That was very exciting news for me because I'm Portuguese. And um, I hope to go to a powwow soon so I can talk to them about that. 